Hello and welcome to online worship at Harrowby Lane Methodist Church. It's good to be with you this morning. Just a reminder there is live worship at Harrowby Lane Sunday mornings at half past ten. So please join them if you wish to. Let us prepare for worship. Listen to these words from Romans, chapter 15, verse 13. God of hope, I put my trust in you. As I spend this time with you, may your joy and peace fill me and your hope overflow through me. Lord, we come to you this morning, trusting in you believing in you, wanting to be part of you. Lord, may we listen to what you have to say to us. May we act on what you have to say to us. And Lord, may we believe in you too. Amen. Thank you. 
Psalm 118 verses 5 to 9. Pushed to the wall, I called to God from the wide open spaces. He answered, God's now at my side and I'm not afraid. Who would dare lay a hand on me? God's my strong champion. I flick off my enemies like flies. Far better to take refuge in God than trust in people. Far better to take refuge in God than trust in celebrities. Hebrews chapter 11 verses 1 to 6. Faith in what we don't see. The fundamental fact of existence is that this trust in God, this faith, is the firm foundation under everything that makes life worth living. It's our handle on what we can't see. The act of faith is what distinguished our ancestors, set them above the crowd. By faith, we see the world called into existence by God's word. What we see created by what we don't see. By an act of faith, Abel brought a better sacrifice to, Ca to God than Cain. It was what he believed, not what he brought that made the difference. That's what God noticed and approved as righteous. After all these centuries, that belief continues to catch our notice. By an act of faith, Enoch skipped death completely. They looked all over and couldn't find him because God had taken him. We know on the basis of reliable testimony that before he was taken, he pleased God. It's impossible to please God apart from faith. And why? Because anyone who wants to approach God must believe both that he exists and that he cares enough to respond to those who seek him. This morning we're going to be talking about faith, belief and trust. It's, is it true for you that you believe what those who you trust tell you? Trust opens a door. You will believe what they say because you trust them. You take them at their word even if you don't quite understand them. But how about someone that you don't know? How do you trust blindly? Well, it's simple. When the words that they say match up to the things that they do, then trust is built. What about when it comes to God, though? Since you don't have the opportunity to see and observe God in the same way as the people around you, the way that you see God working is different. We watch and observe how other Christians live out their lives, not only in church, but in their everyday weekly lives. We can see from that how much they are living out their faith, the faith that they profess. We trust because we see what they do, and that Jesus' name, we look to them to give direction and wisdom. However, sometimes we can see them and sometimes they are not being particularly Christian in their behavior or their actions. So we then doubt their commitment. We see that when words match up with action, that trust is built. When someone hears God's word in the Bible, this is the means by which faith in God starts and grows. But just hearing those words does not mean that faith will follow. Faith comes through the message of Jesus, so we know that the salvation of God through the Bible is the means through which God reveals himself to us individually so that we can know him personally. Another word for faith and trust, they go together. Did you know that the word faith in the New Testament is the same word that is often translated as believe? So in English, we use three words, faith, believe, and trust. In order to share the same meaning as one word in the New Testament, pistis. However, faith, belief, and trust for us don't always have that same meaning. There's an example here. If you think of a zip wire made of a pulley suspended on a cable mounted on a slope. Object is to get from the top to the bottom, suspended on the wire. 
Lots of people, if they had the opportunity to do a zip line, would jump at the chance. Not me. I would be absolutely terrified. But many would also say no. Why would they say no? Because they say something along the lines of the fact that they don't trust the wire not to break. However much we consider and persuade them that the wire's been there for many times, thousands of people have zipped down the wire, nothing has happened, no one has died, no one has fallen off. They still don't make a difference to their thoughts. They still don't want to do it. They are actually saying in effect, I believe it will hold me, I just don't trust it. This is a challenge we have when it comes to understanding faith and belief. Faith and therefore belief is believing in what we cannot see. To trust in Christ is to not have a plan B just in case that whole Jesus thing doesn't work out. To use our example, you either get on the zip wire or you stay firmly rooted on the, the ground. The difference between the trust levels of our heads and our hearts, our belief can be summed up in this little parable. Think about this. The chicken and the pig offered themselves to their owners for breakfast. The chicken gave something, the pig gave everything. We trust God because of what we know of his word. We trust his word because of what we know of God. Jesus is a light and his words are the light for the world. We can know if we have trusted Jesus when the spirit of God draws us to the truth, which we find and we learn through the Bible. Those who have true faith are drawn to the light of God. The word is like a moth to the flame. They don't run away from what God says. They run towards what God says. The work of God begins to take root and these things are the evidence of trusting Christ, that when we trust in him, our heart's desire and our life choices centre more and more on allowing God the rain to grow these holy characteristics within our lives. This world that we live in is tilted against a God. It is so easy to fall in a pattern of believing God in our heads but in insulating our hearts from trusting in him and within his word. Yet my thought is that if we as a church, church family, were to together move out of the shadows and into the light, what could possibly happen? We might see hearts are broken over their attitude towards God and towards each other. We might see ugliness rear its head and then forgiveness ask for and be given. We might see the powerful presence of God wash over us during worship and teaching and prayer. We might see healing of deep hurts of the kind that only the Lord can heal. And we might see God move and we are different because of it. So my encouragement to you today is to trust the Lord Trust him with all the places inside of you that you don't really want to bring to the light. But you will be glad if you do. Anything that we keep in the dark is just an extra weight to carry and we do not need to carry that weight anymore. In Psalm 118 it says, Better to take refuge in God than to trust in people. Better to take refuge in God than trust celebrities. So who will you put your trust in today? Amen. In my wrestling and in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, you are the peace.
Let us pray. Loving Lord, we are living in an uncertain world, a place where it is difficult to be sure. And we may be facing doubt now. Loving Lord, we ask that your spirit will enrich, empower and assure us. May we come to know your peace. May you work through our failures and enable us to feel safe. We pray for the people that we will meet this week. Our neighbours, our friends, our family, our colleagues. You know our relationships and you know their hearts. People who drop into our minds now, we pray for. And in the silence, name them. Lord, may we shine a beacon of light into their lives. Loving Lord, we pray for the dark places of our world, where there is war, where there is hunger, where there is poverty, where there are environmental disasters, where there is illness. We pray that we can be a beacon of trust that will fill their lives, that through trust in you, you they will be enriched empowered and assured. Lord Jesus, we ask these prayers in and through your loving name. Amen. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness.
May our Lord Jesus Christ renew our faith, renew and cement our belief, and give us a steadfast faith. So as we step out in confidence into the days and weeks before us, we will truly believe, truly trust, and truly rely on you. Amen. Thank you for joining with us this morning. We look forward to seeing you again next week.